press the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the CVR You're Almost There webinar. I'm glad to have you on board. And for those of you who were uh, waiting patiently for me last week, I apologize. I had some brutal technical difficulties, literally walked away from my machine for two minutes right before the webinar, and then my machine decided to uh, do its magic update and I was completely locked out. So uh, I really apologize for that. And uh, I blame Microsoft for it, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> Anyhow, um, we've got some great things for you tonight and uh, I'm psyched to have everybody on board. Thank you so much for uh, taking out time in your evening or day or wherever you are to uh, just chat a little bit about what's going on. So let's get right into it. Here's some of the latest updates to our CVR training. So we have had lots of incredible data uploading to the CVR uh, servers. We've been scoring this data. Uh, we already have data from Ryder showing 20 to 30 watt improvements at FTP. Uh, we've got some really nice improvements for the FRC folks as well. Uh, I've seen uh, almost a 200 watt increase in one Ryder's uh, uh, one minute power, which is incredible, uh, and not to mention the uh, the all arounder plan as well. We've got some really nice improvements there too. The racers, they're going hard. You know, some of you guys I think are racing a little too much. Um, it is just February, so don't overdo the racing part. So be careful with that. Data uploading to cycle fast, working smoothly. I believe we've got almost nearly all of the bugs out of that right now. So thanks for your patience on that. If you do have any trouble with cycle fast, let me know. Uh, we do have one issue that I saw yesterday and we've worked on uh, fixing that issue here just today. So um, hopefully everything is good. Our group workouts have been incredibly well attended. We've had between 30 and 65 riders each group workout. Which is, which is outstanding because uh, we've got lots of different times and uh, days that we are doing group workouts. So plenty of people to ride with um, all throughout. And reminder, you know, we've got a Wednesday ride at noon for everybody in Europe to do that group workout there. And then we've got Saturday ride too. So hopefully uh, we've got enough different times and different days that will allow, allow you to do all of these different group workouts. Our Peaks Coaching Group coaches have been leading these, and uh, I'd like to thank those and those coaches. I know that some of them are on the, the call tonight, the webinar tonight, so thank you. We've uh, had some great leadership by all of our Peaks coaches to give out some great encouragement, give tips, and lead those group rides, so thanks a lot to our coaches. And we've got great feedback, so thank you for participating in our forum, on the, on the Facebook page as well. That's great. Thank you so much. And if you do have any questions or need help, just use that CVR forum. So uh, we're updating that thing, uh, hopefully on the daily basis. So uh, it's every once in a while, it takes a few days to get back to it. So just be patient there. I'm not on it every single day. All right, so let's talk about the points ranking. We had a little slight change in here. And uh, again, um, you know, we are, uh, this is our first time doing this. So uh, I hope you can understand a little bit. We're just trying to work out the most fair and amicable way to make sure that everybody gets a chance to be selected. Um, and here's how the points are gonna work now for this works, uh, for the different group workouts, and how the point schedules are. All right, so you get five points for every group workout that you attend, okay? So um, you, can, you only get points for five of those, okay? So you can get maximum of 25 points. So let's say, for example, if you have, you, you have 15 or 20 hours to train, you could do six workouts, six group workouts every week, uh, or actually seven or eight maybe. Um, and then, you know, that would not really be fair to the rest of us who can only do one. OK, so, um, you know, what we're really trying to do here is we're, we want to make sure that we at least have five and we get a maximum of 25 points because that way you have at least uh, one every week in, you know, didn't have one the first week, we won't have one the last week when we, and, and so that way we've got those five in there. 
You get 30 points for each CVR training race you attend and finish. Okay, you got to finish the race. All right, so if you get dropped in the race, you still have to finish. All right, so keep riding. All right, this is just like the real world, right? I mean, you don't just quit. You got to keep riding to get to the finish line. Max of 60 points total. So you do more races, you know, whatever, that's, you're still only going to get 30 points for that. Okay. Now, we originally talked about having the racers be able to get points for their races. Um, the problem with that is we can't identify when they're in a race and we, you aren't competing against the other people in the training plan. So then you can't get points for the finishing positions because that's the next thing, right? In these races on Saturday and Sunday, they happen on the fourth week and they're happening on the eighth week of the plan. You get finishing points, 50 points awarded for first place. Points are awarded 30 deep. Uh, if you get 30th place, you get a 0.5. Okay, so that's how these points are awarded. So in order to really get the maximum points, you need to do those actual CVR training races that occur uh, on the final weekend, okay, or that fourth weekend. Now, if you did not do the races um, in week four, okay, then you can do two races on week eight. Okay, it's Saturday and Sunday, there'll be two races there and you'll get your maximum points. All right, so for participating, all right, again, you still only will get points for the, um, the 30 deep. Now, if you did two races in week four, all right, only your finishing position will be taken from the first race. Okay, you will still have to do one final race, the final weekend of the plan, in order to score maximum points. Now, if you do both races in week eight and you didn't do any of the races in week four, then you'll be scored on both of those races in week eight. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Note to those on the racer plan. Now, the racer plan didn't prescribe a race on week four. That was an oversight. I blame myself, not Microsoft on that one. So sorry about that. That was my fault. Um, so what we've done here again is you will need to do two races on the final weekend in order to score max points for racing. Now that's a rest week leading up to that final weekend. So you should be fine to do both races, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. Okay. And we'll score the finishing positions for those. Um, so don't fret about that. Don't worry too much about that. You'll be fresh. You'll be strong because you're going to come off a great eight week training plan. The last week you'll have rested. I would highly suggest you rest and those racers, um, you know, don't overdo it on your Tuesday race uh, because you need to rest and you have a shot at making this uh, training camp. Now, other points that you can you can get right 50 points total based on your improvement from the start of the plan to the end of the eight weeks five points per two percent improvement at your 20 minute power five points per five percent improvement at one minute power five points per ten percent improvement at your five second or sprint power 50 points are based on your consistency you'll be scored based on how many hours you train versus what is prescribed in the training plan Okay, so let's say, for example, the training plan says on Tuesday, you need to do an hour and a half, okay? Well, let's say on Tuesday, you upload a ride that was an hour and a half long, then that gives you maximum points for that ride upload, okay? Now, let's say, for example, you ride on Tuesday and you only upload an hour. Well, you get a percentage of those points for that time. Now, let's say, for example, on that Tuesday, you go outside and it's a beautiful day and you ride for three hours, but you were only prescribed to ride an hour and a half. Well, that's fine. You'll still just get the maximum points for that hour and a half. OK, you're not going to get any extra points if you ride longer. OK, so don't worry about that. Don't 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 try and game the system there because you're not going to get any additional points. OK. And that allows you to have a little bit of freedom to do whatever you need to do if you're following your coach's advice or however, okay, or you want to go out on a group ride and have fun with your friends. Now, at the very eight, 
eighth week on the last day, all right, if we have a tie with all these different ways to capture points, which I have a feeling there might be a few ties because uh, we've got some very good riders here and you guys are doing a great job at uploading data and making all this stuff happen. Um, the best five minute power in your test on the last week of the plan will be the tiebreaker. Okay, now some of the plans, the more advanced plans, had a five minute test in the first week. Some of the other plans did not. Okay, that was on purpose. Now, the last week, everybody has a test in the last week. It's going to be a sprint, it's going to be a one minute, it's going to be a five minute and a 20 minute test, very similar to your first week. Okay, and you got to do a race. Okay, so yeah, it's a rest week, but you got two days where you're still going to get some training in. Okay, remember testing is training, and training is testing. Testing is training, and training is testing. So make sure that you do that five minute in that last week of the plan. Okay, so really critical because that's going to be the tiebreaker. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, now how do you qualify? All right, top 20 riders, 10 male and female, will then be invited to the CBR Fantasy Camp on March 18th through 21 in Thousand Oaks, California. It's just north, north of L.A. You'll fly into L.A. and we'll pick you up and get you up to Thousand Oaks. Uh, it'll be just before the finals. Okay, the finals will be that following weekend. Okay, so that will be the 24th and 25th. That weekend of March will be the finals. You're going to be there already. You're already there. All right. If there are riders in the top 10 that cannot attend or do not want to attend, their slot will move down to the next available rider. OK, so we'll send out the final rankings. We'll send out our inv invites to everybody. And then uh, at that point, you'll, ha you'll be able to make your decision if you'd like to come or not. OK, to any riders will attend the fantasy camp for free. You only have to pay for your travel to and from the camp. OK, so that's going to be your responsibility. The camp is valued at over eighteen hundred dollars. Here you will compete against riders from over the four days. Okay, the top six riders will be selected for the World Cup Finals. So the camp is four days long. All right, it's going to require riders to do a hill climb, a time trial, a race day. All right, and demonstrate good descending skills, bike handling skills, pace line skills, and graded on your ability to persevere through rough conditions. In other words, you got to be a good cyclist. Okay, so this is going to be uh, a part of the, the, the deal here. We're not just bringing people who are really good at riding their trainers in their basement. All right. We want really, we want to make sure that, hey, you rock on Zwift and you have been a big part of this. And at the same time, you know how to ride your bike. Okay. So it's going to be a part fun uh, piece of that. We're going to coach you along the way. Okay. So you're going to receive coaching, right? So it's not going to be like, you know, this is, you know, we're going to throw you to the wolves here. This is a training camp, all right? This is, we're going to have, I'm going to have some of my best peaks coaching group coaches there. I've been doing training camps for 21 years now. We're going to coach you along the way. We're going to have coaching sessions on each day, uh, teaching how to do corners, teaching how to descend, teaching how to do um, climbing drills, all these things, teaching sprinting. We're going to teach different racing scenarios, tactics and strategies. I mean, this is going to be fun, right? This is going to be a really, really fun camp. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to, have a, you're going to make some new friends that you're probably going to keep for the rest of your life. And, and it's going to be a little competitive, too, at the same time. Okay, so we're going to have a fun time. But mainly, you know, just remember, you're going to have a great time. Okay, all riders who are selected for the camp will have to sign a legal and binding document that affirms you are representing yourself and your abilities honestly. OK, so if you're doing this thing right now and you're 350 pounds, but you're putting in 150 pounds on Zwift and you show up to camp, then we're going to send you home and you got to pay all your expenses. OK, so we're not going to put up with that. All right. So if that's you right now and you're in this deal, just know that, you know, that's going to might as well turn down your slot because we're going to send you right home. OK, you're not even going to be a part of the training camp. All right, so we're going to have a legal binding document that goes out to the invitees as well. There will be doping control, too. All right, so just keep that in mind. Um, you know, we're not 
we're not playing any games here. There's going to be big money on the line, and this is going to be a fair and square uh, race, and we're going to make sure that everybody gets a chance. All right, once you've been selected for the finals, okay, make it through training camp, then there's going to be um, on Saturday you'll have a heat. And so on Saturday you'll race with everybody, so the elites and the performance category riders, right? Uh, well, I'll, I'll explain those to when, we, when you get out there. And then on Sunday, it'll be the finals for the performance category and, and for the elites as well. Okay. It's a, it's about an hour and a half race, maybe an hour, 45, maybe two hours with warm up and cool down. All right. It's going to be a hill climb. It's going to be a road race and a fast criterion like event. Okay. All riders will win cash. The minimum prize is going to be a thousand bucks. Okay. So you're going to get a thousand dollars you know, to at least pay for your way to get out there and get back and all that jazz. Okay. So that's just part of the deal there. All right. Where are the rankings? Okay. So here's the rankings. So go to HTTPS colon slash slash cycle fast.cbrworldcup.com. Log in. Okay. Click on standings in the top menu. All right. So we're currently working on an improved version that allows you to click on the rider and see details so you'll also be able to be filtered by gender and power band all right so that's coming we're working on that right now so hopefully that we'll have that here um, before the end of next week so that's where you find your rankings right now all right so that's basically where we are right now with the big picture of the rankings how you get qualified all that jazz if you have problems with your score or with your rankings or whatever please email us at support at cyclogent.com. Okay, support at cyclogent.com. And send us a specific email. Don't just say, my points are wrong, and then dash Bob. All right, that, that's not going to help us. Okay, and you're going to say, okay, hey, my points are wrong. I did a ride on the fourth Saturday. I did the group ride on or the race on fourth Saturday, but I don't have points for that. All right, so... We need to know exactly what happened there and why you think your points are wrong. Okay, so give us a play-by-play. -play, be as specific and precise as you can be. All right, so we can diagnose what the problem is. If we've missed something or there's a bug in our system or whatever, you never know. It's a computer software thing, so all kinds of craziness can happen. Um, but at the same time, we need you know that accuracy from you to let us know exactly what's going on so we can figure it out okay and just be patient hey we're trying to make sure that everybody gets a fair shot here and we want to make sure that you do too so don't worry we're gonna get this stuff fixed and, you know and again this is uh this is our first time doing it we're gonna have a little bugs here and that's that's part of the deal but at the same time you know hey i hope you're really enjoying the training plan and you're getting a lot out of it i mean 79 bucks i mean holy cow that's a great deal right there along um, just for the training plan. Okay, so hopefully uh, hopefully you're having fun. Let's talk strategy now. Let's talk race strategy. Okay, so you're almost, you're, you're past halfway. Okay, so maybe you got a taste of the race strategy um, in week four. Maybe uh, that was surprising. Maybe it was a little fast when it started out. Maybe it slowed down. Maybe it got harder as it went along. But let's talk about strategy because strategy is an important thing. It's going to be an important thing um, at the World Cup Finals. It's going to be an important thing in Week 8 races as well. A strategy is a plan with all its objectives. It can be simple or complex. Tactics are maneuvers employed by the riders or team to achieve an objective. Okay, So we're going to use our tactics to, in, to actually achieve the objective that's part of our strategy. What are our principles of strategy? Number one, element of surprise. Okay, catch people off guard. Energy management, save and draft as much as possible. Complete execution of tactics. All right, so if you make, if you attack and make a uh, an effort, do it completely. Okay, be ready to change. Adaptability to change. Okay, so maybe something's going on. You have your your tactic in mind, but all of a sudden that doesn't play um, in with how the race is going to go. You know, you have to change that tactic, which will change your overall strategy. You got to take risks. You know, you're not going to win if you're not willing to take risks. Calculating tactics, the principle of consolidation. OK, 
Okay. Capitalizing on opponents' weaknesses. Okay. So maybe you've learned something about some of the riders in the group workouts, right? You've been paying attention to who else is in there, what the names are, who's there at the end, you know, who's struggling a little bit, etc. cetera. Uh, in the races, maybe you've been paying attention to those names too, right? Have you learned a little bit about them? And then race your strengths, okay? So um, if you're a phenomenal sprinter, it makes really good sense to, to wait to the very end to sprint, okay? So keep those things in mind. Element of surprise. Timing is everything in this, right? So um, don't be predictable. They may know that you're going to attack. They just don't know when, okay? And sometimes the attack comes when... Everybody says, oh, that's a dumb time to attack. That's sometimes the most perfect time to attack because everybody expects that, oh, that's going to come back and be a failed attack. All right. So just keep that in mind. And when a tactic is employed, right, so attack into a headwind. Well, we don't really have headwinds in Zwift. All right. A climb, okay, into a corner or anytime it's unexpected, right? So that's one of those things, right? We've got all these little turns and twists and ups and downs and stuff inside the game. Some of those things are could be, you know, a great time to attack when people don't necessarily know when it's going to come. Okay, so make sure you are being unpredictable. Energy management, no wasted efforts, all right? So when you make an effort, you make an effort, okay? Because your energy resources are limited. Accomplish a goal using the least amount of effort, right? Any tactic employed should be directly benefiting you or your team, okay? So um, maybe there you've got a buddy, right? I don't know. Maybe you guys have got uh, a couple of friends inside the training plan. I'm sure that you probably do. And maybe you're going to work a little bit together for the final race. Who knows, All right? So keep that in mind. Conserve energy, shut it off when not in use, right? Critical. Complete execution of the tactic, all right? Most attacks fail, okay? But anything less than 100% will definitely fail, okay? So when you attack, give it your all, all right? Lack of confidence is the main reason why riders back off, right? It's not because of their abilities. It's just between that stuff between your ears. It's, you know, your mentality. So stay with the attack, even though you're suffering. To increase your odds, right, have climbers attack on the most difficult part of the climb. Tempo riders attack with a few kilometers to go. Sprinters need to be on a good wheel with a kilometer to go, right? You're not 20 people back. You're up there at the third wheel or something. Never allow others to know you're giving up on a tactic, okay? So maybe you attack, and then all of a sudden, right, it looks like, oh, that person's giving up, but that may be a fake adaptability to change all right so when that start goes off right when that gun goes off all bets are off right you have a plan but usually once things start out that plan uh, can just completely be thrown out the window be flexible so have an a and a b and maybe a c plan all right be willing to adjust if all of a sudden you see man every time i attack people are just chasing me down they're not letting me go and i can't get away okay so Maybe then it makes more sense to do something towards the end or a sprint or on the hill. Don't think too much. All right? I see this a lot in bike racers. Um, they see an attack and instead of just going with it, they, they think about it. And then it's too late. Right? A lot of bike racing is almost instinctual. All right? and it just has to, you just have to go. Right? And that's something that, um, is a, uh, is, is something that, that takes time to learn. Be an actor, not a reactor. All right, so critical thing here, okay? Critical thing. If you want to change, if you're willing to be uncomfortable, okay? That's going to be a part of this. That's what you're learning. Now, risk-taking. Risk is a tactic with less than a 50% chance of success, all right? There is a difference between a risk and stupidity, okay? Calculated risks you know through training. Avoid dangerous situations, Okay. Uh, and if you're not willing to lose, you'll never win. I love this graphic, right? Here's your comfort zone. Guess what? Here's where the magic happens, okay? So that's where you've got to take those risks. That's a big part of it. Calculating tactics, the principles of consolidation. 
any advantage gained must be defended when the opponent employs their tactics. So let's say you take off inside Zwift and somebody comes up to you, right? So now all of a sudden you've got to make sure that, hey, I just defend my tactic. I'm off the front and they've got another attack. And so let's take work together and keep both of us off the front, right? Instead of just giving up, oh no, it didn't work. Now somebody's chasing me down. Well, now you've got somebody to work with. Look at that big picture. Okay, keep in mind what your goal is for the end of the race. Having it, a, for example, a lead, an early lead, may not be the best interest for you, but maybe um, as a team, it might help you as a team. Okay, so in this sport can be one of intimidation, especially when um, you're you're just showing a big show of force. Now, racing your strengths. Know what you are good at. Develop a strategy that plays to your strengths. Raise your strengths and train your weaknesses. Okay, so that's a good good motto to go by for a lot of us. Okay, it doesn't apply to everybody, but it does apply to a lot of us. Now, let's talk about the sprint here. So it's absolutely critical to get your leg speed up. Now, sprinting on it. A smart trainer or a regular or a dumb trainer is not the same as sprinting outside. So you need to make sure that you are um, creating that effort and you can sprint. Okay, so if you haven't sprinted yet on your indoor uh, trainer, you need to start practicing it. Getting out of the saddle, sprinting, going hard, um, it really makes a big difference there. All right, it is about, about the jump, right, that initial acceleration. It's about your big power to weight ratio, and it's about your fatigue. So how long can you hold that sprint? Because you start to fatigue, is that 10 seconds? Is that 20 seconds? Is that 30 seconds so that you can push it all the way to the line? Okay. Now, the fastest line, the finish line is a straight line. Well, it doesn't matter really too much inside the game, right? But for every action, there is a reaction anticipate don't react okay so again same thing now let's talk about some racing tips inside Zwift because these are going to be helpful as well one thing that you may have noticed already and you need to use this as part of your tactics right is that there's a lag in the game it depends on your internet connection it depends on how many gajillion people are on Zwift at one time it depends on the fact that, um, you know, what, what else is happening inside the game. There can be some lag there, all right? You need to anticipate that. So when you're in that corral and the races are out to start, you need to start pedaling hard about three to five seconds before it starts, okay? Because you could be three to five seconds behind already, Right, the race could have started three seconds before your game says start. Okay, and then all of a sudden you're already catching up. Right, you may have seen this before. You may have been like, "What the crap? I took off already when it says zero and went as hard as I could, and I was already like 50 people back. What happened?" Well, that was the lag that you were experiencing. So you need to start it. I would say three to five seconds before to make sure that that's not happening to you. If it is you're going to be in a good position. Same thing here if you reach the bottom of the hill and everybody goes bonkers at the bottom of the hill, then you need to pedal hard three to five seconds before you reach the bottom and again at the top of the hill. Start your sprint three to five seconds before you really want to start it, right? You need to make sure that you are ready to go because again, it could be three to five seconds lag, and then all of a sudden somebody else has jumped and they already got a jump on you, okay? So you need to make sure that you start that. So don't wait too long because if you wait too long, it may be over already. You need to learn all these little things inside the game, okay? I know that many of you have been are new to it at the same time. This has been five weeks now, so hopefully you've all learned about power help, uh, power ups, the aero helmet, the feather, the ice cream truck, drafting truck, etc. How to message people inside, how to use your phone to, 
to uh, play inside there and talk to others and such. So I'm hoping that everybody's really catching on with that. There's a great Zwift support forum that can teach you all of the different little tricks inside Zwift, including how to look at yourself in different views and such. So that's a great way to kind of just play inside there. So keep that in mind too. Because that's going to come down to the very end. Like what, you know, if you come to the finals and you've got the race and there's a bunch of money on the line and somebody drops a feather at the top of the climb and you don't know what the heck that was, um, that's going to be a disadvantage and you need to know that. Okay, so keep that in mind as you get closer there. So in summary, know as much as you can about the race and competitors. Okay, so I would highly recommend you pay attention to who's racing and riding in these group workouts from here on out and then in the finals. Base your strategy on the skill level of the riders. Have a plan, but be willing to adjust. Encourage your you know, riders, encourage you guys to be aggressive, race your bikes, and use your strengths to take advantage of others' weaknesses. Okay, so there we go. That is it. So let's take some questions here. I know I've got a whole ton of people asking all kinds of questions. And uh, we will make that happen here. Okay. And is that across all categories A through D? Mark Andrews asks, question mark. Now remember, Mark, that's the league. Okay. That's the league. So this is training. This is different. Okay. So you're asking us about a completely different system. Um, you know, we're not racing in the league. This race, these races are in the training part of it. All right. And so that's where you're going to do these races in the training piece. Okay. So we've got races that happened on week four, uh, the weekend. Okay, of week four, and then we've got races happening here in the week eight, the very final week, that are the training pieces. They are not the league. So make sure that you don't go to a race that is a league race. All right, and that's a, a concern because I know that some of you um, in there did do a league race in week four because you were confused about that. If you did do a league race in week four, you're going to have to do two races in week eight. All right. Now, the racers, if you did a race in week four, all right, if you did one of the training races in week four, you don't need to do two races on week eight. As long as they were the CVR training races, if they were a league race on week four, that weekend, then yes, you do have to do the two races in week eight. Okay, so that's the critical differentiator there. And uh, again, that's I'm, I'm going to make sure that the, the races for um, um, part of that. Okay, so that, that we have it clearly done there. Now, week eight, right, the races are at, um, oh gosh, I believe 11. 05 or 1115 Eastern Standard Time. All right, so don't quote me on that. I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the, the schedule right now in front of me, but I'm confident it's one of those two times. I will send out an email and let you know for certain. That is the training race, okay, on Saturday and on Sunday. You need to make that race, okay? Don't sign up for the 6 a.m. league race on Saturday and Sunday because that ain't the race. It is on that time is either 11.05 or 11.15 on that Saturday and Sunday, the eighth week. Okay? All right, so don't worry. I'm going to send out something there for that. Now, where is the starting power taken from? All right, so the starting power is taken from basically the first, um, your best power, okay, in the first three weeks of the training plan. Okay, so your best sprint, your best one minute, and your best 20 minutes. Okay. Some of you started on week three because you got in the game a little late. Okay. So we're taking your power in that week three. All right. And we're taking your power from week one. Lots, most of you, majority of you started on week one. Yay. Thank you for signing up on time. Um, and um, did the test. So that's where we're going to get your starting power from. Can you repeat the dates of the camp and the finals? 
So the dates of the camp are from the 18th through the 21st of March. Okay, so that's a Sunday through a Wednesday. Thursday is the is going to be a rest day, the 22nd. Friday is going to be a rest day, the 23rd. So then it's going to be the finals. The first heats are going to be on Saturday, the 24th, at the LA Velodrome in in LA. You'll be will be in the uh, in the in the uh, infield of the Velodrome, and then on Sunday the finals, the 25th of March. Right. Will watt per kilogram improvement account for any reduction in body mass during the course of the program? Yes. If you lose body mass, and then I'm hoping that you'll update your weight, and um, then uh, you should have that. We're looking at watts per kilogram improvement. Okay. So as you lose weight through the plan, then that should be a part of that. Okay. So it will definitely be that. Okay. Okay, got a question. Here we go. Um, I emailed yesterday, so forgive me if I'm rushing the issue, but I did a group workout in week five that shows me DNF and Zwift power. Was the event counted for me as I complete the event or upload the ride to my calendar? Um, Frank, I think that the um, best thing to do here is e if you've already emailed the support team, then they will get to that one. Okay, so just be, uh, be, be, be patient with that and all that jazz. Will those select for the camp need to bring their own bikes? I would highly recommend bringing your own bike. I mean, um, you know, boggled my mind. I was in Paris at the uh, finals in Paris. One of the top elite riders, um, you know, didn't bring his own bike. And it was like, okay, man, uh, you realize like you can win like, you know, four or $5,000, right? Um, and it may be the difference between like, a wheel or a half of a wheel or a couple of inches and you know of course he wasn't on his own bike and he didn't have the seat that he liked he couldn't he, he shifted off of the big chain ring because it wasn't adjusted correctly he had problems and it might have cost him a lot of money and a placing so i would highly recommend to bring your own bike okay i really think that's a great idea um and I just think it'd be crazy not to. Um, and you're, you know, you're gonna feel better on it. You know, that's your bike. Now, there's lots of different ways to get it out there. You can fly it out there, um, or you can FedEx it out there. Uh, FedEx has probably got the best um, rates. Bikeflights.com has got even better rates than FedEx. So I like to send mine on Bikeflights.com. So check those guys out because they do a great job. But at the same time, if you don't have a, uh, a, a second bike, you know, to ride for a couple of days before camp, then it may be better to fly that bike out there. Okay, so just keep that in mind and uh, all that jazz. Okay. All right. Du -du 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 all right, good question. What kind of bike? Um, I would not bring a time trial bike. I would bring a road bike. Um, you're going to be in the mountains, the famous mountains uh, north of northern uh, of LA. Uh, have you ever heard of Malibu, uh, Mulholland Drive? I mean, these are some beautiful, classic, classic roads with sweeping turns and beautiful climbs, 30 minute climbs, uh, crazy fast ascents. You're going to see incredible exotic cars and motorcycles. I mean, it is a beautiful, beautiful spot. I would not bring your time trial bike, bring a road bike. Um, how do you know our weight from walk for kilograms is in the race results? Uh, because we're getting it from Zwift. All right, cool. All right. The training race in week four had three categories, A, B, and C, based on FTP. So, um, yeah, let's, 
we've got that in, in that piece of it. So you're going to have um, riders who are um, doing the advanced racer plan and all that jazz. So, so don't worry about that piece. The key piece is that make sure that you make that training race. And then we've got the separation from that. Just don't do the league race. Okay. So I apologize for any confusion that may have called. I know, uh, caused, I know, um, you know, a couple of riders ended up doing the league race instead of the actual training, the CBR training part. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. Well, that's it for tonight. Um, if, uh, if you have any more questions, just go to the CBR forum. I'm on it and I'll be glad to answer them there and uh, let me know and uh, we are looking forward to an amazing uh, three weeks coming up here you've got a really great chance everybody's got a great shot at getting to the finals here uh, and so just have fun with that and uh, it's going to be great so stay on it don't 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 uh, put yourself out at this point because everybody has a really good shot uh, and uh, you'll be able to get get in on this so um, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I know you guys are going to have this. What I'm going to do is uh, I've recorded this webinar. I'm going to put the link of this webinar up in a CVR forum post. Okay, so that way it's in the forum. I'll put this up on YouTube and get that up in the forum post. So if you want to watch it again, um, let me know. That's where um, that's where it'll be. Okay, so good deal. All right, cool. All right, thanks everybody. Um, great questions. And uh, I am so uh, pumped for you all, and thanks so much for uh, being a big part of this. It's uh, very successful, and it's only going to get bigger and better. So uh, uh, please tell your friends about it, and we're going to make it even better for the next season. So keep up the great work. Talk to you soon. Good night.